London Welsh. London Welsh night had really gone downhill since Chris had broken up with Melanie and Jeff had split up with Sam. What used to be the highlight of Dan's week had become a mope fest. The London Welsh Club was a weekly Wednesday meeting of three Welsh boys in London to help them get over their own personal healeith. It was meant to be a celebration of Wales night, not a bitch about girls night. They may as well have stayed in with a big tub of ice cream and a chick flick and a box of tissues. So last week, to change the dynamic, Dan had set them all a challenge. The three Welsh boys in London had the shag a student. There were so many of them in London that it should be easy, even for this ugly band of brothers. To make it interesting, they each put a tenner in the kitty, winner takes all, and they agreed to add a fiver each for each week that passed without a winner. Chris woke with a start. It took him a few minutes to get used to the unfamiliar surroundings. The light coming in through the blinds seemed to be unnaturally bright. He soon remembered where he was and who was next to him. Kate. Boy, it had been good. What a night. He couldn't believe he'd actually approached that beautiful woman in the bookshop and told her he was lost. He couldn't believe that she'd helped him and said yes to his offer of a coffee. He couldn't believe that that coffee had led to this. He couldn't believe it'd be him who won the bet. Kate stirred, her beautiful face angelic in sleep. She opened one eye and smiled. Chris touched her face. He'd have to make his excuses and leave soon, but he didn't want this to be a one-night stand. Lucy had been up for an hour. She showered, dressed, and now was bringing Jeff a cup of tea in the hope that he'd get the hint and leave soon because she wanted to get her life back and, quite frankly, Jeff had been a bit of a disappointment in bed. Why did she always end up with the useless ones? Things had been so promising in the pub. He'd really taken an interest in her. He was all questions and ears. Made her feel special. But in bed he was so vain. It was all about him. It was as if she wasn't there. Jeff was already awake when she came into the room. He sat up in bed and smiled. Lucy didn't like the look of that smile. She hoped he wasn't going to be a stayer. But the smile wasn't anything to do with her. Jeff was thinking about his two mates. Why did they bother betting with him? Of course he'd win. He was Swansea Jeff. And Swansea Jeff was the man. Dan and Flo lay quietly together, touching but not talking. It felt good, the warmth of the Saturday morning sun on their faces. Dan smiled to himself. He'd not only won the bet, but possibly met the woman he'd been looking for. Her head was on his chest and he idly toyed with her ear. All seemed right with the world. He thought he might use the money he'd won on the bet to take Flo out somewhere nice. Somewhere better than the seedy disco he'd found her in. What was a beautiful woman like that doing in such a dump? What was he doing in such a dump? Both of them said it wasn't their usual haunt and that their friends had suggested it as if they were embarrassed to be there. But both of them were glad that they went there last night. Dan didn't want to, but he knew he had to get up and leave soon. He had a match at three and needed to get home and get his kit. He kissed Flo gently on the forehead and reluctantly got out of bed. Three doors opened at the same time. Three men stood in their respective doorways. All visitors, all tired, all wanting a bacon sandwich before getting back to their own places. They stood looking at each other in disbelief. Then one of them put a finger to his mouth nodded in the direction of the front door and led the smiling trio out into the sunshine.